Hi everyone, Steve here from ProgrammingMadeEasy.com and today I thought I would talk to you about a problem that I know a lot of developers experience over time uh, and that is kind of this coding fatigue, this getting, getting stuck in a rut, doing the same thing over and over again and you can get kind of bored after a while. So I'm going to talk about the five things I think you can do in order to help improve that situation and still feel motivated to code. So number one is going to be to find a partner to code with. So, uh, you know, having somebody else to work with really helps to make you feel a little bit more accountable, a little bit more responsible for staying on task and doing something. But also having someone else to interact, uh, you know, to interact with and have those, those conversations and bouncing ideas off of, that really kind of keeps the, the juices flowing. I know that uh, sometimes I have these philosophical differences that I love to get into with my fellow developers, people that I work with, my peers, and just kind of talking about, hey, is this the right way to do something? And this is why I think this is right. This is why I think this is the wrong. And you know, having those other pieces of input from someone else to give you new ideas and new sparks of, oh, that's a great idea. Uh, you know, without those conversations and that type of networking, it's going to be very difficult to stay motivated. Okay, so my second suggestion for a, another way to stay motivated is to set yourself up with some core hours. Okay, tell yourself that I'm only going to focus on code between these hours. Schedule your meetings outside of those hours. Schedule all your uh, all your errands, schedule your phone time, schedule your YouTube time, Facebook time, whatever, all the social activities and meetings that you do. Schedule those outside of the core hours and just focus on just those core hours. But the converse to that is what's so important. Don't allow yourself to code outside of those hours unless you really feel motivated to, but I, I would really urge against it. Try to set yourself with, you know, maybe a five minute buffer or something around these six or seven hours a day that you strictly want to adhere to. You're not going to code outside of those hours. There's a lot of good reasons to do that besides just the fact that it will keep you motivated over time. Uh, it also means that you have consistency in the number of hours that you actually work which means that you're going to be reflecting a true, the true nature of how much work you're actually getting done. If every week you're, you're doing different amounts of hours, so say one week you're doing 35 hours of code, uh, another week you're doing 46 hours of code, another week you're doing 60 hours of code because you got a deadline to meet, well, that means there's going to be inconsistency in the data, in the number of, of stories and story points that you're getting accomplished every iteration and you need to try to avoid that. So by setting some core hours, you're not only helping to set some boundaries in terms of, you know, how much, uh, you know, how much is uh, work you're actually doing, but you're also setting up some good uh, static data for people to work off of. And it's just going to be a much better relationship when you have kind of these boundaries that you're setting between you and your boss. And this allows you to, you know, kind of force yourself from pushing against those physiological limits that you have, right? If you, if you feel like you, you know, some days you feel like you can work 12 hours and that's not a problem. Sometimes you feel like four is your max, uh, you know, and trying to give yourself that kind of core set means you're balancing out both of those scenarios and giving yourself kind of a, a, an actual realistic physiological deadline for yourself. Okay, so my third point, the third thing that I want to mention in regarding to how to stay motivated to code is to make small goals and to recognize when you've achieved them. Okay, so making those small goals is so critical. Uh, you know, baby steps, you know, kind of setting yourself up. And I just got visions of uh, what about Bob in my head. But yeah, setting up those baby steps, setting up those small little goals that you know are accomplishable, and then taking the time to reflect on the fact that you have actually achieved them. So when you get them, there should be some satisfaction to this. I'm going to take a quick little uh, detour here into my golf career. <laughs> One of the things that I found so helpful and so motivational is that I would never pick up my ball uh, when I had a little tiny short putt, even if it was a one footer or two footer, easy little tap in, no problem to put that in. I always tapped it in. I always wanted to hear at the 
end of of that golf hole, I wanted to hear the ball hit the bottom of the cup. There was a very distinctive sound to that that kind of gave me a reward for the fact that even as bad as the hole might have been, at least I got the reward at the end. And that's really important to your psyche. It's really important to have this goal, this something that makes you feel good about the accomplishment. And small little goals are much easier to accomplish, but you have to make sure that you are respecting the fact that you have achieved them. You know, you gotta look back and, and celebrate that. So large goals can be very overwhelming. You know, if you set something for five year plans or something like that, they're gonna feel overwhelming and probably not achievable. But small little tiny things that are baby steps that you can do always feel uh, a lot easier to accomplish. Okay, so the number four way to stay motivated to continue coding is to focus on the things that you love. So, you know, we all have these things that we have to do from time to time that we don't really wanna do. But as long as you keep your mind in the space of going to something that you love, right? Trying to spend as much time doing the things that you love, even if it's just an hour a day, even if it's just, you know, something you have to do after work, uh, you know, trying to find something that you're passionate about regarding code. Uh, maybe it's a new language that, you, that you've learned and picked up, or maybe you picked up a Raspberry Pi and you want to start tinkering around with that. Uh, or, or maybe you just love code reviews. Maybe that's one of your favorite things to do is to do code reviews. So you're the code review person in, in your group and you just got to go do those things. Whatever that thing is that you love doing, having the discussions about agile or, you know, uh, doing code reviews, doing the testing or, you know, implementing. I love talking about strategy pattern. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had just because I love talking about the strategy pattern in relates to uh, open close principle. You know, it's something that I'm passionate about. I love to talk about it. And because I'm passionate, because I love to talk about it, people like working with me. I like working with them and I stay motivated. I stay motivated because I have those connections with people because I'm doing something I love and they can tell. So that's number four. Number five, the fifth and final uh, idea that I want to convey to you in this video on how you can stay motivated to code is to never stop learning. Continue to try to do something new. I, we all love stability and the comfort of something unchanging. I, I think we all kind of like that to a certain way. It's, it's easy to get attached to it. And that's, we find this in the industry a lot, right? We find these old timers like me uh, that, that, you know, we have one or two things that we do really well and we want to try to build a career out of that. And that can feel, you know, uh, that can feel both comforting, but also a little uh, fearing. It's, it's very, very easy to fear when you're in that scenario that if you only have a couple things that you're good at, what happens if those things go away? What happens if those, if that language that you learn is no longer a language? Like what if you learn Perl? Perl's still, a, you know, kind of, kind of out there, but the amount of work for it is diminished. And so trying to find work for it is kind of often hard. Um, you know, and there's those kind of things you have to continuously try to learn new things. Uh, and and it, by learning those new things, not only are you improving yourself for your career, but I think that new things are exciting. New things are, are easy to find pa a passion about, right? You find something new, you do get that Raspberry Pi that you learned to code up to do something cool. Um, you know, or you, you found some new pattern that you try to implement everywhere. Uh, or, you know, you picked up some sort of new language that you, you realize there's some functionality here. There's some ways to think about code in this new language that you can start applying to your old code. You know, all of those new things, those new ways of, of doing something and, and constantly keeping your brain refreshed on thinking about new ways to do things is going to continue to bring some excitement into your coding environment. So by all means, you definitely want to do that as well. So just to, as a quick recap, the five things I think you can do in order to stay motivated to code is number one, find a partner to code with. There's nothing like having someone else to bounce ideas off of. Number two is gonna be uh, to set some core hours for yourself. Set those boundaries up where this is my time to code and I really kind of want to only do code during this time, unless of course there's something I'm really passionate about, but really be careful not to let that uh, draw too much of your time. You really got to set those boundaries and set them good. 
Uh, the third thing is make small goals and recognize when you achieve them, right? Making those tiny little baby steps and then rewarding yourself, giving yourself a pat on the back. Maybe it's something as small as a Hershey's kiss that you eat at the end of every story you accomplish. Whatever that little small little goal is that you set for yourself, by all means, do that. Make it small and achievable so it doesn't feel insurmountable. Number four is to stay focused on the things that you love, right? Really hone in on what is it that keeps you going? What are the things that you love to do? And, uh, you know, make sure that, that your passion is what you're actually in it for. And then the fifth and final way, once again, is to never stop learning and you should always be trying to do new things, okay? And that's going to continuously refresh your brain and spark those synapses and make you feel refreshed uh, from, from time to time. So... Thanks everybody for watching. I hope that these five ideas and suggestions to, uh, for you on how to stay motivated to code have been helpful to you, and I hope to talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. I'd like to thank these members for joining the channel. Without your contributions, this channel would not be possible. Thank you.